what really matters in life. Uh, the th stuff that you think matters really doesn't matter at all. Um, your family, your friends, your health. That's really what's important. It doesn't matter how much money you make, what you do with it, how many vacations, how big your house is. If you don't have your family, you don't have your health, you have absolutely nothing. And that's one thing that was drilled home to me over the past four years of this battle. Another thing is I've met some amazing people that I never, ever would have met had my daughter not been afflicted with this disease. Um, many are here tonight, like Malcolm's family, who I've met through this battle. I met my little cancer buddy from the transplant ward. He was so young, she probably doesn't even remember us. Um, from several years ago, the Keelys who are not here, but that was the mom that I called when my daughter was diagnosed because I had no idea how I was going to get through this. Uh, the Lees. <laughs> um, I went to high school with her dad, for Christ's sake, and then here his wife was calling me when her daughter was diagnosed, and I was like, oh my God, you know, talk about coming full circle. You don't want it to happen that way, but I'm really glad that I could be there for them and that there was other families that were there for us. Um, not only am I the proud mom of Maya Terry, cancer survivor, three times over, we have a beautiful son, Michael, age seven. You can't forget the siblings because they too are affected by this horrible disease in a way that you would never imagine. I know that my daughter's lost out on a lot of her childhood, but so has my son. Considering like the past six months, her dad and I have been in St. Jude in Memphis. And my son has been passed between <coughs> my parents, my boyfriend, my sister who lives next door, her dad who was flying home so that we could, you know, pass off the son and pass off the daughter. It's, it's, it's kind of horrible. Um, I was so ignorant before I became a parent of a child with cancer. I think I knew two people my whole entire life who were affected by childhood cancer. And now it's like, I feel like a guru. <laughs> I'm like, people call me out of the blue that I've never heard. And I'm really glad that they do because I think I have something important to say. You can get through this. It's really going to suck. There's no doubt about it. It's going to suck more than anything you've ever imagined in your life. Um, but you can do it. And you can band together, and you have to share your resources and share your stories, and you have to keep on the doctors as brilliant as they are. They're not all knowing, but they, they love your children, and they're going to do what you can, but sometimes you're going to agree with them, and sometimes you're not. And by networking with other parents who have been there, done that, that's the only way you're going to get through all this. Um, there's a lot of children. I know we talked about the quilt, I have to say. Julie, I was really a little upset to see it up there because I had no idea what we were going to say about it. But at the same time, you can't forget the reality of, of this horrible disease. Um, and I'm so happy that there's so many children here that are kicking ass. I mean, really. Woohoo! <laughs> That's why we're here today to make sure that we fight this horrible disease and, and make money for research. And like I said, I was ignorant. I knew two children <coughs> my whole life. And now I know of so many, so many wonderful families affected by this disease, and it makes me sick. And which makes me even more sick is when you when you see the video that's coming up after my talk, the pie video, that talks about how many kids really are affected by cancer. Think about it. While we're having dinner here tonight. Six families are going to hear your child has cancer. Like, how sick is that? Six families are going to hear those horrible words while we're having dinner here tonight. Every 40 minutes, a family is affected. Um, it's just not okay. And then to hear all these big organizations like the American Cancer Society and everybody else, my mom's a cancer survivor, breast cancer. They get breast cancer. Everybody wears pink. I'm wearing gold. Gold's for children. We have to make it that much aware. We have to. 3% of all cancer money is going to kids? That's really? That's, not, that's really not okay. <laughs> um, so I'm really glad that I met Malcolm and his family who are pushing this issue on behalf of all our families. Um, you heard a little bit about my daughter. She was non-symptomatic, five years old. Her kindergarten teacher calls me and says, ah, her neck doesn't look right to me. It looks a little fat. I'm like, oh. Like, do you need an EpiPen? Like, does she have an allergic reaction? Because my son was like allergic to everything under the sun. She's like, no, it just doesn't look right. Within five hours, your daughter has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Not one symptom, nothing. No night sweats, no fevers, nothing. 
right? She goes through treatment for two years. We think we're hitting the high road. Yeah, guess what? The treatment of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma gave her secondary AML. Yeah, you're, you're not going to fight that with chemo or radiation. You're going to go into transplant. I'm like, awesome. Okay, who's going to do it, mom or dad? Well, mom, dad, your brother, <coughs> match. So what do you do? You go into the National Registry and hope that somebody matches your child better than you do, the one that birthed her. Thankfully, we had a, an awesome guy. His name is Bill Gelvin. He donated marrow to my daughter. She had her surgery at CHOP in November of 2009, and she rocked it. I mean, yeah, she had graft versus host. She had everything horrible you can imagine, but she survived, and she went on to third grade. January of this year, yeah, relapsed, secondary AML. We were told that that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you for playing. Um, game over. And we said, yeah, that's not going to happen. You haven't met Maya. And off we went to St. Jude, and we went for a research protocol. That means there is no traditional treatment that could help my daughter. She had to go into research scenarios. Well, the research scenario gave her three organ failures. She had heart failure, lung failure, and liver failure. And once again, we were sent back to Mama Medical and said, thank you very much for playing. Goodbye. And she's like, yeah. I won't tell you what she said. I mean, I'd like to, but I won't tell you what she said. And we said, no, we'll see you in about three to four weeks. And that's exactly what happened. We went back to St. Jude in September. We started conditioning for her transplant, started a new research protocol. We weren't ready to try that other one again. And we found another anonymous donor. And this girl, we found out that she's 23 years old. And she lived in Britain during the Mad Cow episode. So we had to sign a waiver just to get her marrow. I said, I don't know. Why are we going for that? <coughs> um, God, so I was like, hmm. What, what are we going to do? We're going to give her mad cow disease just to cure cancer? And they're like, yeah, well, kind of, maybe, possibly. But you really don't have a chance. So we took the chance. And not only is she here today, 100% cancer-free, 100% donor, and no mad cow disease. <laughs> so my daughter is my hero. So with that being said, I want to turn you over to the pie video, which I said is for most of you in here are probably grossly aware of the statistics you're about to hear. And if you're not, it's going to be a huge wake-up call. Um, it's not okay. It's not okay that our kids are at the bottom of the totem pole for research monies. Um, it's not okay that we don't have donors in the registry that match our children, especially um, if you're not white Anglo-Saxon. You pretty much don't have a shot for finding a, a marrow donor, and that's really sad. So. We're trying to get people swabbed, donate platelets. My daughter is definitely a vampire. I can't even tell you how many transfusions she's had, but she could use your blood every three weeks, and she's just one person. So donate marrow, donate platelets, uh, donate your red blood, and donate little money <laughs> to childhood cancer research. And with that, I turn you to the pie video. Thank you.